Hello and welcome to what can only be described as the death knell of video games. Other people may describe it as entry number five in the Lucosa Supreme Shit Game database. Now the big problem with putting this game uh, well anywhere is that as a result every other game that gets put into this playlist is likely to look like just a gaming masterpiece because although I've said it on several videos when I've reviewed games in the past I genuinely cannot believe that a game for any system whether it be the latest and greatest PC all the way back to the ZX80 I cannot believe that any game exists that is worse than this so uh, well, let's load it up and as you can see <coughs> this is or will be when it uh, finally loads Go. This is Alfida Zane Pet for the Commodore 64. This was released in 1984, the same year that uh, Impossible Mission was released. And uh, this is uh, the game based on the television series. Um, now things did not get off to a great start the moment you picked up the game and looked at the cover because the cover as far as I can tell anyway doesn't feature anything from the uh, television program it's just a generic photo of a building site um, if you're not familiar with the television program I was never a fan of it it could be that I was a bit too young to really understand the humor in it I mean it was shown I think in the very early 80s around like you know I think like 81, 82, so I was either 9 or 10, and yeah, a lot of it just went completely over my head, so I was never really a fan, um, and it's, it's basically about, uh, the main character is Oz, who was played by Jimmy Nail, who I can't stand, um, <coughs> And uh, yeah, it's all these uh, British uh, builders who are working on a building site in Germany. And um, yeah, it was meant to be a sort of comedy drama, meant to be. Um, so I could never really get into it. Now, I want to set the scene here. This game was released by Tynesoft, um, and Tynesoft was a very, very small uh, company, but they were part of Tyne T's Television, the ITV uh, franchise back when ITV was still franchised. And Tyne T's Television was the company that actually made our feeder's own pet. So they didn't have to buy this license because they already owned it. Now let's put that into perspective. When Ocean Software made games, of, you know, television programs, and those pro, you know, those games included such gems as Knight Rider, as um, uh, Run the Gauntlet, as Miami Vice you're getting an idea of uh, the, the sort of quality of games that were released because Ocean had to make enough money to recoup, uh, recoup the costs of buying the license in the first place and then make a profit on top of that and they considered you know those games you know, fucking Knight Rider and that good enough to be released 
so that they could make that much money back. Those games were considered good enough for that. This was published by the television company that made the Alfie Zane Pet uh, television program. So they didn't need to recover any costs for buying a license because they didn't have to buy it in the first place. They already owned it. So it didn't need to match the quality of Knight Rider, of Miami Vice, of Run the Gauntlet. <laughs> so you would be forgiven for thinking, okay, that doesn't, you know, inspire a great deal of confidence. And you would be <laughs> well within your rights to think so. So this title page then doesn't uh, inspire much confidence either. There are some graphics of sort. Our feeder's name pet is uh, actually written in or well, done in some sort of graphical style are they sprites well they could be i'll get back to that in a minute so this game was uh by bob carr and there i press j for joystick import 2 or any other key to use the keyboard All right. so instructions why, I'll, I'll show you the instructions. I'm not going to read them all out because, you know, it's, it's just fucking... It, they do go on for a bit. But I do want to show you something specific that is in the instructions. Notice uh, underneath the uh, actual instruction layout, it has the uh, the graphics here. Brick, Eric and Trowel. Those graphics you see there are not just there as a small sort of like, you know reference that is actually what the graphics look like in the game in the first stage let's uh, continue again um, with this the, so the second stage that is exactly what the graphics look like so you'll notice that uh, the barmaid and you are the same height as the barmaid um, the uh, the stein of lager is exactly the same height as the barmaid and you. So this pub serves uh, six foot steins. Uh, the tables are actually uh, they're also the same height as you or, or the barmaid. So um, yeah, the tables are about six foot tall with six foot steins. Uh, <laughs> standing on oh. then we get to uh, what will be the third and final level now here I'm not 100% sure but I think uh, the police car or fuzz as they uh, hilariously refer to them I think that might actually be a sprite I'm not 100% sure all the other graphics I think I tell I think the street lamps might be sprites as well but that is genuinely it. All the other graphics are precisely as you see here. They are UDGs. No sprites at all. So anyway, that's the instructions. Then it tells you the uh, controls. Well, I'm going to use the joystick. Fire doesn't do anything throughout the entire game. So let's get a game underway. And... Uh, Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it, it is barely recognisable, but that was a rendition of um, That's Living All Right, or whatever it was fucking called, the, the music, uh, I think it was the end credit music for the programme. It was also released as a single, well, in this country anyway. I don't know if it's just me, but you see the, 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 the UDG with its, you know, two animation uh, frames there. To me, it looks like he's goose-stepping across the screen. But it's no ordinary goose-step. It's some sort of, like, super over-the-top John Cleese from, you know, 
the Germans episode of 40 Towers goose stepping. It just looks absolute fucking shit. And yet this is the highlight of the day. As far as this game is concerned. Right, so let's get the game actually started. And listen to this. So, the sound slows down if there is movement on the screen. Now, I've lost the light there because uh, I can't place a, a part of the brick wall onto an empty space. It has to be on top of a brick wall. But it moves straight on to level 2. So we have to work, or have to rather sit and wait for this thing to be drawn and you're thinking what the fuck is that supposed to be and then it says this is Dusseldorf by night and as the lights go on all over the city bloody fucking blah well I've been to Dusseldorf 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 um I don't remember any part of the sky uh, you know the skyline looking like that all right let's start level two so here we go then beer keller so we're in the pub and uh, there we go. So the six, uh, the three foot steins and three foot tables appear. You need a fucking lift to enter the fucking pub. So right, we got one. Hooray! Now, if you hit anything other than uh, a stein, it's uh, you lose a life. The controls are staggeringly unresponsive. And as a result, I've got it at the table, so I lose a life there. And now the game goes straight on to level 3. And if you think that what you have seen so far is a staggering mountain of shit, and let's face it, unless you are seriously brain damaged, that is precisely what you've been thinking, you haven't seen fuck all nothing yet. Because now we get level 3, and this is where the game goes from being utter fucking shite to utter fucking insulting towards shite because now that uh, level 3 has started uh, you sit there and wait for everything to be drawn you have to get to the house at the top of the screen there and then we get some more great music What the fucking hell? How can these cunts fucking release this? Anyway, I'm not even supposed. I'm supposed to be showing you the game at the moment. I'm not meant to be starting the fucking ranting. But all right, now we've got to sit here and wait for the lights to go out, which turns that area that they were illuminating black. And of course you have to guess your way back to the, the, the house. But when the lights go out, every block is individually fucking filled in. And there is fuck all you can do to speed this part up. You have to sit here and wait for however many it will fill. It is randomly done. Sometimes it will leave four lights, sometimes three, sometimes two. Sometimes every single one is, uh, you know, every single light goes out. And you've got to sit and wait for them all to be done individually like this. So even if you do manage to get through this level, and let's face it, that is highly unlikely... But even if you do get through it, you have been sitting here waiting longer. See, I was pressing the, the, the key to move and he wasn't fucking moving anywhere. You have been sitting there waiting for the game to set up this level for far longer than you spent actually playing the fucking level. Even if you get through it. 
And you know, the final fucking insult where where uh, where, no, where this game is concerned is this was a full priced game. When this came out, this cost eight ninety nine. So, <laughs> what what more can I say about that? Tynesoft, you know, Torrentes Television actually expected people to pay nine quid and get this. So I'm going to do something I have never done before. And that is start a second game when playing this fucking shit. Except it looks like it's crashed. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Oh, what a fucking shame. Right, so I've <laughs> I've had to actually reload this fucking thing. So let's uh, start another game. We do not need the instructions now. I, I mean, just... Just looking at it and listening to it, and what audio is in this game makes me glad that the vast majority of it is played in total fucking silence. I mean, just uh, the the best way of summing up this game. Um, I'm. I mean, I've said quite a few things in previous videos in the past you know for purely for comic effect for comic exaggeration I am not saying what I'm about to say just to you know exaggerate it or for comic effect or anything like that I am absolutely serious with this um, every game on the Cascade Cassette 50 is better than this I, it, it really, this is genuinely below the standard of cassette 50. So let's just get, a, get this second game. I, I, this, I just... And Tynesoft thought, right, this is definitely worth uh, releasing. We're definitely going to have to bring this out. And it will sell by the fucking shitload. Oh, for fuck's sake! No sprites at all on that first uh, level. And then you get this. I mean, the entire game is written in basic. No surprise there. Except they, they have, yeah, they disabled the run stop key. So you can't sort of break into it and uh, check the program listing out. I bet you the listing for this program is shorter than quite a few cassette 50 games so we go past that bullshit fucking Dusseldorf city skyline and we get this where because <laughs> why he has to enter through that fucking lift they couldn't you know put in an animation of him uh, you know actually doing anything the controls are staggeringly unresponsive I was trying to get him to move down to the the next you know six foot stein and it just didn't fucking move at all and then you get this I mean this really is taking a fucking piss I mean, it takes long enough to get to this, and then more of this fucking... <sighs> so the fucking music cannot play normally when he's goose-stepping across the screen. It can only make the sound between the, well I say animation, between each time the character moves across a square. Oh, fucking what. 
I mean, this game is fucking insulting. I mean, so I was never a fan of the, the television program, but for fuck's sake. No one who was a fan of the television program would have thought this is good. I mean, Time T's television were just basically saying, we think that people who like our programs are a bunch of fucking cunts and we're going to treat you like such. Like I say, there is nothing you can do while you are waiting for this level to be fucking drawn. You've got to just sit there and then, you know, obviously by that time, yeah, you've got no fucking clue what the, the layout is because you've just got so fucking bored waiting for it to, uh, you know, redraw itself. Has it crashed again? No, it hasn't. Actually, I'm almost sad about that. I mean, I, I, I really can't face having another go of it, but... Uh, I will. Eight ninety-nine. Eight fucking ninety-nine for this. And what let's say cassette fifty, the games work out to be twenty P each. And that is still a rip-off. This fucking shit is eight ninety-nine <coughs> for one game. Oh, for fuck's sake. And it's not even as good as the, say, as any of the games on cassette 50. I, I've just never seen such a fucking mountain of shit as this game. And in several videos in the past, I've described them as, you know, uh fucking Kilimanjaro sized fucking shit mountains. This is a fucking Olympus Mons sized mountain of fucking shite. And once again, because it's totally unresponsive, I just went straight past the thing. So even on that level, it takes longer for it to be, you know, drawn up than it does to actually play the fucking thing. But this is where it really does take the fucking piss. I mean... Oh. This is, uh, this is genuinely fucking painful. I mean, even if, you know, these areas here weren't all covered over as they are, because of how unresponsive the controls are, you still wouldn't be able to get through the fucking stage. Never mind after, you know, you sit here and wait for, you know, another fucking millennia before the level can actually, you know, you can actually start playing on the fucking level. And by the time it gets there, you just, well, I'd say you've just lost all interest, but you never had any fucking interest to begin with. I mean, there's going to be at least another four more that it's got to fucking, you know, blank out, block by fucking block. Fuck it. I mean, this, this game really does give you reason to lose the will to live. Oh, 
fucking what? Is it going to do the lot? Is it going to do that last one as well? I mean, you know, yeah. So the actual gameplay there lasted, what, about four seconds. But you were sitting there waiting for I don't know how fucking long. <laughs> I, I really just do not know what else I can say. I mean, when Sergi uh, Skripal uh, came out of uh, hospital today, <coughs> he was uh, interviewed by a uh, uh, journalist, and uh, they, they they asked him, you know, oh, what was it like, you know, laying in there in, in a hospital, you know, probably dying from this you know, nerve agent that you had been exposed to. Yeah, and uh, he, he turned to him uh, and he said, well, it could have been a lot worse. I, I could have been playing Alfie Saint Pet on Commodore 64. And, uh, yeah, even when it happened, um, old uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, he said, you know, well, there's no way that uh, this uh, nerve agent attack could have been done by us. Because if it was done by us, we would have done something far worse. We would have made him sit there and play our feeder same pet on the Commodore 64. I mean, the, the, there is there is an accompanying uh, book which uh, which I got here, and uh, this this book, which you know, it's it's it, it goes on for a fair bit, and it contains the list of things that are more enjoyable than playing this game. And among them are wanking to a photograph of Adrian Childs, uh, finding out you're adopted and your real parents are Heinrich Himmler and Dame Edna Everidge, uh, having a pineapple shoved up your ass and pulled out your fucking knob, uh, watching a Michael McIntyre DVD, that one's a bit harsh, I mean this game is shit but fucking hell, it's not, you know, it's not bad as that. Uh, being anally gang raped by a herd of elephant seals. Uh, Ebola. Uh, having a barbed wire catheter. I mean, you, you know, you, you see what I'm saying here? This fucking shite! It's... Bob Carr here, the creator of this fucking thing. I mean, he is not a fucking human being. Uh, what what Bob Carr actually is, uh, he was this this lone sperm which somehow managed to escape from Satan's wank sock, and sort of mutated into this grotesque creature, whose sole purpose on this fucking miserable planet was just to inflict the most pain and misery as he could possibly devise. And this was the culmination of his life's work. I mean, you know, <laughs> video games do not get worse than this. I don't care how many more videos I, I put onto this particular playlist. None of them will get anywhere near the fucking level of absolute fucking shite as this thing does and this came out in 1984 the Commodore 64 was not brand new it was two years old it cost 899 it was the it was the same price as impossible mission some cunt out there who was a fan of the television series, probably picked up Impossible Mission in one hand, and then he picked up Alfie's own pet in the other, and was trying to decide which of the two to get. And he thought, well, I do really like the television program, so yeah, I'll, I'll put Impossible Mission back, I'll buy Alfie the same pet. Uh, can you fucking imagine how he fucking felt the moment he was confronted with this? I 
Uh, I, I really do mean it. That games don't get worse than this. It is surely impossible for games to get worse than this. If they do get worse than this, I really do not think I want to fucking see it. So there you go. Our feeders ain't pet for Commodore 64. Unquestionably the biggest heap of shit ever to be marketed as a so-called computer game. Um, yeah. That is the perfect note on which to end this fucking monstrosity of a video.